Well, this right here was definitely not what Don Lemon wanted to hear. And then you have the, those who are asking uh, for reparations for colonialism, and they're wondering, you know, $100 billion, $24 billion here and there, $500 million there. Some people want to be paid back, and, uh, and members of the public are wondering, why are we suffering when you are, you know, you have all of this vast wealth? Those are legitimate concerns. Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go back to the beginning of a supply chain. Where was the beginning of the supply chain? That was in Africa. And when that crossed the entire world, when the slavery was taking place, which was the first nation in the world that abolished sla uh, slavery? The first nation in the world to abolish it. It was started by William Wilberforce, was the British. In, in Great Britain, they abolished slavery. 2,000 naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery. Why? Because the African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're totally right. If reparations need to be paid, we need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say who was rounding up their own people and having them handcuffed in cages. This video right here, guys, is a little bonus. I did not expect to make this video today, but of course, Dom Lamont's facial expression was absolutely priceless. Guys, Jai Claymore here. We got to talk a little bit about this. Now, guys, make sure you stick around for the full video because in the second half of the video, I'm going to be giving you my honest thoughts on reparations in general and why it is that I feel the way I do about them. Now, guys, the lady is actually right. If you want to go to the source material for slavery, I think you need to actually go all the way to the start, the main actual pipeline, the actual source itself, which was the continent of Africa. You see, in Africa, they sold people to countries like, say, the United States and, of course, England. And eventually, over time, England kind of led the effort against slavery. Okay, another country that, quite frankly, also somewhat led the effort against slavery was actually uh, the country of Russia. You see, Russia had these things called serfs. Of course, most of their serfs were actually white, and of course, they ended serfdom in the 1850s. You factor that in, you factor in England actually trying to end slavery, and of course, you factor in the American Civil War, which occurred in the 1860s, which, by the way, the main view around the Civil War, the reason for the Civil War was actually slavery. Now, we're going to stick to that for right now. We may make a video in the future, probably on Gear 33, asking the questions about exactly what really did truly actually cause the Civil War. But the thing you got to understand is this right here. It was fault, and slavery ended after the war. Of course, there was the whole Jim Crow thing, but after a while, you had the Civil Rights Movement, and eventually this type of stuff eventually was put to rest. So let's just go ahead and get over this whole systemic racism crap because there is no systemic racism. Don't worry, I'll probably do a video in the future explaining why it is that I do not feel that there is any systemic racism. So with that right there being said, let's go ahead and get back on this topic of reparations. First and foremost, reparations is just a bad idea. You see, you're forcing taxpayers who, quite frankly, never owned slaves and probably had uh, relatives that did not own slaves to pay somebody else some odd three or 400 years in the future. It's not a good idea. You're making these people pay for the sins of someone else's past. You guys see what I'm saying? Slavery technically ended in this country in 1865, but you want people who live in 2022 to pay for people's sins of that time frame there. You see, I think the whole slavery thing is a, a little bit overplayed, seeing how there are no slaves right now here in the United States. However, though, there are slaves in those Middle Eastern nations, you know, those Middle Eastern nations that you claim are pro-gay and are pro-actual freedom. You know, those, those same places that the woke left likes to tell us are great, which, by the way, are actually pff, horrible places, horrible institutions that do horrible things. You guys don't seem to realize just how good you have it here in but the United States. Back to the topic of slavery. You see, the British monarchy went out of its way to kind of end slavery. And, of course, ever since the Queen has died, uh, people on the left, especially our woke buddies, our woke... I just go ahead and call them my entertainment because they say such crazy stuff. They've been out there saying that the British monarchy was this, it was that, it was cruel, it was brutal. And, yes, they had their times when they were... But the thing about the Wokes is that the Wokes don't believe in redemption. You see, they don't believe in redemptive arcs. It's kind of why it is that they kind of like the idea of a Mary Sue. Basically, like a character like, say, Ray from Star Wars, who quite frankly didn't struggle. You see, the Wokes believe in absolute perfection. They believe people should be actually perfect, and they don't believe in this thing called redemption. This is one of the reasons why when they do cancel culture and they cancel over things in the past, things that you may have said, they don't take into account the fact that you change. You see, the British monarchy helped end slavery back in the 19th century. They may have actually been working as far back as the 18th century to do that. 
And eventually, Russia, they ended their slave trade. The United States, we eventually followed the Civil War, and the slave trade was actually... As a matter of fact, the United States was trying to end the slave trade back in the 18... Uh, back in the early 19th, or early 19th century. It was Thomas Jefferson signed a law and act the Slave Trade Act, basically saying no more slaves were to be brought back in. The idea was to basically move the issue up at a later date, and eventually a civil war was fought. You see, the framers of this country were actually trying to get rid of slavery all the way back during the American Revolution, but they can never actually come together on a compromise. Don't worry, we'll probably do videos on that in the near future, especially in project form, because we've got to answer this great big question of systemic racism. And why it is I think that people need to stop bitching and bellyache about stuff that occurred over 150 years ago. I mean, dude, nobody alive owes you any money, so let's just go ahead and stop with this whole reparation. Instead of talk. getting mad with the woke left and saying that they're full of crap and that they're lying, maybe what we should say is uh, they know a lot that, quite frankly, just is not true. Now, guys, here is the deal with the whole reparations and slavery thing. First and foremost, there were other people besides black people that were slaves. Go back to the earliest slaves, the Jews. Now, of course, I can hear somebody saying that uh, you're here to send for Israel. No, I'm not. I'm just giving you guys some actual historical context. The Jews were enslaved by the Egyptians. The Jews were actually enslaved by just about anybody in the Middle East. Also, other people that were enslaved. What about the Irish? Yeah, the Irish, they were enslaved. Remember, they actually had this thing called indentured servitude here in the United States. They would do seven years before they actually uh, left their servitude, and they actually uh, worked along slaves. But you don't hear the Irish complaining about it. You don't hear the Irish begging for uh, reparations. You don't hear the Irish begging for anything. The Irish know how to take their shit and move, and move the hell forward. Very, very tough people. you got to give it to the Irish. But here's the thing that really bothers me. The whole thing about reparations, and here's my actual problem. You want somebody else who has no direct line to any slave master to pay a certain amount of money out of their pocket to you today, even though you were never a slave. I mean, think about that really quick. You want somebody who never had any connection to any slave master to pay you money, and yet you were not a slave, never have been a slave. Your mother was never a slave. Your father was never a slave. By the way, you kind of sort of already got your reparations. It was called the Great Society Act, 1965, or maybe it was 1964, that Lyndon Johnson signed, which basically created a giant welfare state. So, yeah, you already got your freaking... Uh, you already got your reparations, so do us all a favor and stop. This the right here is where I'm going to end the video at, guys. You see, this right is America. You see, in America, the great thing about America is that you can choose your destiny. You're not chained to your past. You can actually choose your destiny. You can get up off your ass and pursue your own form of happiness, which, by the way, means you got to go out there and actually work for it. If you sit around and receive welfare all the time, you're going to put yourself in a, you're going to put yourself in a position to where you think everybody owes you something. Now, guys. I understand that people are broke, people are poor. I've had my own bad days myself, but of course I've had to pick myself up like anybody else. That's the thing about America is that you always have the opportunity to pick yourself up. Welfare and stuff like that rather is not designed to be an actual lifestyle. It's designed to be a hand up. One of the biggest mistakes that we made as a nation is that we got rid of the work requirement and the welfare, which, by the way, I think is a serious problem. You need to have that work requirement so that way people are given a bit of a line while they work till they find something different. Temporary jobs are simply temporary. Working for low wages is simply designed to help get you over until you find something better. This is one of the reasons why I got a problem with this whole $15 hour minimum wage bull crap. I just left the state where they had a high minimum wage, but everything was freaking double in cost. So at the end of the day, doubling the minimum wage in these areas doesn't really amount to anything, especially with the current rate of inflation. So do us all a favor. Stop expecting people to pay your freaking bills. No one owes you anything. No one owes you any reparations, even though I already outlined to you that you already did receive some reparations back in the 1960s, go ahead and get the hell over yourself and realize that people like myself and people who are taxpayers who have no actual line to any slave masters owe you a damn thing. Pick your ass up, go get a freaking job, and go work for it. Guys, John Claymore, if you like the content, hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comment section, and I'll see you guys later. I'm not like everybody else.